at a rapid pace, and modern society relies on this technology to simply exist. Imagine a world without this advancement. Society as we know it would be on the verge of collapse. Hospitals, transportation, banks and government would not be able to cope if there was a substantial attack on computer systems. Luckily, experts are employed to counter such threats, and whilst an attack of this degree has never been successful, the threat still remains. So who are the people who would want to bring about such chaos, and why would they attempt to do so? Here are just five of the cleverest and scariest hackers to have ever lived. Kevin Mitnick As a young teenager, the hacker known as the Condor discovered a way of cheating a punch card system that would allow him to use the Los Angeles bus system for free. He claimed he was working on a school project and found out how to obtain unused tickets. Only a few years later, he managed to access the computer system of the Digital Equipment Corporation and copied their software. He was eventually charged and convicted of this crime nine years later in 1988. After spending a year in prison, Mitnick began to hack into the systems of a number of large corporations, including IBM, Nokia, and Motorola. He would copy valuable proprietary software and access mail accounts. He was arrested in 1995 and pleaded guilty to wire fraud, computer fraud, and illegally intercepting a wire communication as part of a flea bargain which saw him being sentenced to five years in prison. Whilst in prison, he was kept in solitary confinement for eight months for fear he could use a landline to hack into government computers. After his release in 2000, he claimed in a book that he had never actually hacked into computer systems, but had used social engineering to obtain passwords. Mitnick is now a successful author and security consultant. Michael Kelsey the hacker known as Mafia Boy first developed an interest in computers at the age of six. At nine years old, after obtaining a free AOL trial, he managed to hack the system, which then allowed him free access beyond the 30-day trial period. By the time he was 15, Michael had succeeded in pulling off such an incredible act that cybercrime laws were drawn up as a direct result of his actions, with the authorities shocked that a boy of his age could have carried out such a hack. The teenager from Quebec, Canada, had got more involved in online hacker groups, and in 2000 began his attack that made him famous. He started to take over a number of university networks simultaneously. He created a situation where all the networks were responding at the same time, resulting in it being overwhelmed. Within hours, using the same methods, he targeted the networks of Yahoo, then the largest online search engine, Amazon, CNN, Dow, E-Trade, and eBay. All of these sites were paralyzed by Michael's actions. The FBI eventually caught up with him, and in September 2001, he was sentenced to eight months in youth custody. Today, Michael works as a white hat, someone who identifies security flaws in networks, and has also written a number of articles on the subject. Steve and Steve. It's hard to believe that two of the most pioneering people in the world of technology began their careers as hackers. Not exactly the scariest hackers the world has seen, but they deserve a mention due to their future fame. In the late 1960s, a man called Steve was studying at the University of Colorado, but was expelled from there for hacking into the university computer system. After meeting with a friend in 1971, both became known as phone preaks. Phone preaks were hackers who illegally broke into telephone network systems and would use this knowledge to make long-distance phone calls for free or tap phone lines. Together, they created a device known as a blue box that would be used to emulate telephone signals, which tricked automated telephone exchanges into thinking it was receiving genuine information. Once inside the network, calls could be made, yet would be untraceable. It's alleged that Steve used such a device to impersonate the respected US politician, Henry Kissinger, and he called the Vatican and asked to speak to the Pope. Realizing the commercial value of such a device, the pair started selling them illegally. After nearly being caught by the police, the two decided to give up their criminal ways and founded a company that is synonymous with the world of technology. The company was Apple, and the pair was Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs. Matthew Beaven Matthew Beaven is a Welsh hacker who went by the handle of Coogee. In 1996, at the age of 21, 
He was arrested after hacking into US government networks, initially into the Griffiths Air Force Base Research Laboratory in New York, then later into USAF, NASA, and NATO. Beaven claimed that he was researching information on providing a UFO conspiracy theory. He used a simple Commodore Amiga computer, along with a program called Roxbox, that simulated tones sent out by a telephone operator's dialing console. US Special Agent Jim Christie had stated that Beaven's actions had the potential to have started a third world war. Beaven, as well as his alleged accomplice Richard Price, had transferred information from the Korean Atomic Research Institute to the USAF system. Had North Korea spotted this, they may well have thought that they were under a cyber attack, and may have retaliated with a physical response. However, the data belonged to South Korea, and was therefore less sensitive. Despite a number of investigations before his arrest in 1996, at his trial 18 months later, the British Crown Prosecution Service decided that it would no longer pursue the case, resulting in Matthew being fully acquitted of any wrongdoing. He now runs his own website. Jonathan James In September 2000, Jonathan James of Miami, Florida became the first minor to be convicted of a cybercrime. Aged just 16, James, who operated under the name Comrade, was found guilty of juvenile delinquency as his age prevented any law drawn up being applied to his crime. His sentence of six months of house arrest seems today to be lenient, especially when we consider what he had done. At the age of 15, the US Department of Defense discovered that James had hacked into schools and a number of private companies, alongside government agencies, including NASA. Despite stealing software and information from NASA valued at over $1.5 million, James had yet to implement his greatest intrusion. In the late summer of 1999, he gained access to the Department of Defense Systems, which monitored and analyzed threats to the United States. A series of attacks on government systems in 2007 led the US Secret Service to suspect that James was behind them. It later turned out to be the work of a hacker named Albert Gonzalez. The incident proved to be a turning point in the young life of Comrade, who feared his reputation made him the guilty party. In May 2008, James was found dead from a single gunshot wound. A suicide note was found, stating he believed he was to be convicted of cyber crimes he had not committed. So that's five of the internet's scariest hackers. I hope you've enjoyed, and don't forget to follow Top Fives on Instagram to keep up to date with new adventures and travels. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.